everybody, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today I'm excited to read through this War Cry Monsters and Mercenaries expansion book of rules. I'm so excited to read through this Monsters and Mercenaries Savage Beasts and Deadly Heroes Clash. So we've got some. Lots of fluff, but first to see. Uh, Warcry Monsters and Mercenaries is an invaluable guide to adding the greatest heroes and most fearsome beasts of the mortal realms to your games of Warcry. Whether they be a despotic overlord in thrall to the ruinous powers, a terrifying undead abomination, bestial worshipper of Gorko Morka, or a dauntless champion of order, each will add new and exciting challenges to your games. Okay. What's this? Core rules for Age of Sigmar. Okay, so they're just giving you an idea of Age of Sigmar if you haven't branched out into that. Interesting. Oh, look at that. The Corvus Cabal are not doing so well against that Hydra. I can't wait to see the Hydra. Mm. Uh, death for Hire. It looks like we've got the mercenaries, backgrounds of some of the mercenaries you can get. Ooh, that must be, I'm assuming, one of the beasts that you would face. Look at him. Oh, and look at him. Wow, look at those ruins. Look at that paint job. Isn't that awesome? Wow. That guy. Nice rock. Nice. Cypher Lords facing off against Bestial Glory. Ooh. Dark Oath War Queen. War Queen. War Queen. Dark Oath Chieftain. Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Great Bray Shaman. Lord of Blights. Skull Grinder. Magister. And a Grey Seer. Wow. Look at that model. That looks so awesome. Ooh, the Splintered Fang tests their newest venoms upon all manners of beasts. The fiercer, the better. Wow, look at that. When brute strength and unbreakable will clash, only one can walk away triumphant. Okay. Nice pictures. Ooh. Uh, a Knight Questor, a Lord Veritant, a Knight Herald Heralder, Tide Caster, Soul Render, and Soul Scryer. Ooh. To fulfill their infernal packs, a Dark Oath Chieftain will fight with or against all manner of warbang warbands. Cool. And there's the Untamed Beast. He would fit in with the Untamed Beast, wouldn't he? Ah. Except for he's got a metal sword. <gasps> no. Uh, where skull grinders and iron golems fight, their enemies find nothing but masterfully crafted death. Okay, so we've got this guy in with the iron golems. Cool. Wow, that is one ghastly looking creature. But a very nice rock. Uh, a necromancer, a white king, a lord executioner. Cool. Tomb Banshee, Loom Boss, Shroommancer, <laughs> War Chanter, and Savage Big Boss. Wow. Look at that guy. The Unmade excel in bringing their gift of pain even to the dead. Hmm. Monsters and Mercenaries. Let's see. The rules in this book are intended to be used alongside those found in the core book and are separated into the following sections. We've got Fated Quests. Um, this section contains four campaign quests that can be embarked upon upon Warbands of any faction. I'll probably skip over that so I don't give you any spoilers because quests have got to be more exciting when you try them for the first time. 
uh, challenge battles. This section introduces a new type of campaign battle where your warband is thrust into a deadly encounter that they must overcome in order to reap the spoils. There are seven challenge battles in total. Neat. Yeah. Iron golems versus some untamed beasts. Thralls and Monsters. This section includes fighter and ability cards for three new Chaotic Beast Thralls and eight monsters, along with the rules to use them in your games of Warcry. Ooh! So this is where we're going. Allies. Here you will find rules on how to include allies in your warband. This section contain, er, contains fighter and ability cards for a host of allies and includes options for warbands of all factions. I'm excited for this too! Uh, Warband roster. At the end of the book, you will find an updated Warband roster that includes sections for tracking the elements introduced in this expansion. Well, that's nice. Mm, all the different, different rune marks. Oh, fated quests. Can't give away that. Challenge battles. Let's see. Well, let's just read how to play a challenge battle. When you challenge an opponent to a campaign battle, <laughs> if both players agree, you can instead play a challenge battle. In a challenge battle, one player, referred to as the challenger, is attempting to overcome the challenge that has been set. This player's warband is referred to as the challenger warband. The other player, referred to as the adverse adversary player, is attempting to thwart the challenger. Rather than controlling their own warband, the adversary player instead controls fighters that are referred to as adversaries. First, decide which challenge battle you will play, which player will be the challenger, and which player will be the adversary player. Each challenge battle has four sections, set up, special world, battle plan, and spoils. The setup section of a challenge battle de details how the players must muster their warbands. The challenger and the, uh, advers adversary player will have different rules they must follow. Neat. Adversaries do not have any destiny levels, artifacts, or command traits unless it is specifically stated otherwise. Okay. Here it says, each every challenge battle has a prerequisite and a stake. The prerequisites is the required number of dominated territories the challenger warband must have. If the challenger warband does not have the prerequisite, the challenge battle cannot be played. Ah, you know, um, we'd probably do a challenge battle without worrying about territories, because that just sounds fun. Oop. Can't give it those away. Ooh. Cool. Ooh, here we go. Thralls and monsters. On the opposite page, you will find three new types of thrall. Each of these fighters have the chaotic beast faction rune mark and the thrall rune mark. These fighters can be included in warbands using the rules on page forty-nine of the core rule uh, of the core book. So uh, basically, in campaign battles, uh, this section introduces a new type of fighter referred to as a monster. Monsters are fighters with the gargantuan rune mark. Monsters are subject to the following rules: deploying monsters. When monsters are deployed, they must be placed wholly within five inches horizontally of a deployment point instead of wholly within three inches. <laughs> Makes sense. They are large. Monsters and treasure. Monsters can never carry treasure. Cool. Activating monsters. A monster can be activated three times in a battle round instead of only once. Cool. But each time it is activated, it can make only one action instead of two. So, yeah. I wonder what their abilities are that you could activate three times. That's kind of cool. Each time a monster is activated, it can use one ability before or after its action. If a monster makes a wait action, its activation immediately ends. The monster is not said to be waiting and the rules for waiting do not apply. I figured that. Move actions with monsters. A monster can climb and jump like any other fighter. However, if at the end of a move action, its base is not wholly on a platform or the battlefield floor, it is said to have fallen. Cool. So, you can have the edge sticking out of some of your guys, 
Um, but this one, you have to have all of its base wholly on the platform. Cool. If a monster is said to have fallen, any part of the model's base can be placed on the point picked by your opponent instead of just the center. Okay, well that's handy. Um, that, that's just referring to the two inches. Uh, when you fall, your opponent gets to put to your model within two inches of the point that you fell, and this one is... Um, and it just gives you more leeway because of the size of the monster, which is reasonable. Uh, if any monsters are in play, all fighters except monsters themselves and fighters with the beast rune mark can use the monster hunting abilities shown opposite. Cool. Monsters and universal abilities. Monsters cannot use universal abilities. Okay. Instead, if any monsters... <laughs> Would you imagine a monster rampaging? Uh, I wonder if they have a rampaging kind, though. That'd be cool. Okay. Monsters cannot use universal abilities. Instead, if any monsters are in play, they can use the monster ability shown opposite. Right. Let's look at these monster hunting abilities. For a double, binding ropes. Pick an enemy fighter with the gargantuan rune mark within one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability for each four plus. Subtract one from the move characteristic of that fighter to a minimum of three until the end of the battle. Binding ropes. We didn't bind it completely though, we can still move. Still, probably pretty handy to keep them where you need them to be. Uh, double, dodge and evade. Until the end of the battle round, add the value of this abil ability to the toughness characteristic of this fighter when it is being targeted by an attack action made by a fighter with the gargantuan rune mark. Add... Wow, that's actually pretty nice. Though, if you have to add the value of this ability to the toughness against this gargantuan, I'm going to say that their strengths are pretty horrible. Um, yeah. Uh, double, jump on its back. That's so fun. Oh, we've got to do that. Pick an enemy fighter with the gargantuan rune mark. Until the end of the battle round, if that fighter starts a move action within one inch of this fighter, then after that move action, you can remove this fighter from the battlefield and set them up within one inch of that fighter. So yeah, he's really just jumping on a back and moving along. That's so cute. Go for the eyes. Triple. Go for the eyes. If the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation that targets an enemy fighter with a gargantuan rune mark scores any critical hits, cool. Uh, subtract one from the attack's characteristic to a minimum one of attack actions made by that fighter until the end of the battle. So yeah, they're blind. Really neat. Triple gutting strike. Add double the value of this ability to the damage points allocated by each critical hit. Wow. From attack actions made by this fighter, this activation that have a ranged characteristic of three or less that target an enemy fighter with the gargantuan rune mark. Um, still, that's cool. That's one nasty. I mean, you can only get it with a critical hit, but that is, could be some nasty damage. Yeah. They are going to have lots of hit points, aren't they? Well, of course, they're monsters. They should. Unless, I guess, they're really, really nasty. Quad taunt. Pick an enemy fighter with the gargantuan rune mark that is within six inches of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. If a four plus is rolled on any of the dice, then until the end of the battle round or until this fighter is taken down, attack actions made by that fighter must target this fighter. Well, that is a root. I imagine that's a pretty powerful ability. Getting them to constantly attack ones that are that no relevance to the, um, to the victory condition. Mm, that seems pretty cool. I guess that's why it's a taunt, uh, a quad. Cool. Right. Let's look at these monster abilities. Monstrous Reach. Until the end of this fighter's activation, do not count the vertical distance when measuring the range for attack actions made by this fighter. Well, that makes sense. I mean, he's gonna be huge. So that's cool. That's just a double. Triple Dragon Maul. <laughs> this that already sounds nasty. Pick an enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter, remove that fighter from the battlefield, and set them up within one inch of this fighter. <laughs> then roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each four plus, allocate three damage points to that fighter. Okay, that could 
so easily just murder a guy and that makes so much sense. I like that. I mean, it's horrifying, but it's totally, I'm totally going to be using that all the time if I'm a monster. Absolutely. All right. Quant, demolishing rampage. Of course they've got a rampage, but it's not just a rampage. It's a demolishing rampage. Okay. Oh, terrain feature. All right. Pick a terrain feature within one inch of this fighter in an order of your choice. Place each objective, treasure token, and fighter that is on that terrain feature and on any other fate a train feature that is on that train feature on the battlefield floor in a location of your choice as close as possible horizontally to its current location. Then, in an order of your choice, each fighter placed on the battlefield in this manner suffers impact damage. Then, remove the train features. That is pretty cool. They just completely destroy whatever you're standing on and you're on the floor in rubble. That is very flavorful, I think not as fat and horrifying as, you know, the quad for Rampage, but I really enjoy the flavor of that. <laughs> Using monsters in your battles. Monsters can be used in games of war cry in the following ways. Twist cards, monsters with the chaotic beast. Oh, right. Oh my gosh can be used with any twist card that brings chaotic beasts into play. Ah, that'd be so awesome! Ah, I wonder how much points the monsters are though, because for the most part we've only come across um, ones that you can put 300 points in. I hope they're within 300 points, because that would be some amazing twist. Alright, including monsters in your warband. Uh, this is probably for cam campaign, I imagine. Every monster has one of the following faction rune marks. Chaotic Beast, Monsters of Order, Monsters of Death, or Monsters of Destruction. Consult the monster allegiance table opposite to see which factions a monster shares allegiance with. A monster can only be included in a warband whose faction rune mark appears in the same column as its own faction rune mark. Additionally, the rules for including a monster in your warband vary depending on the style of game you are playing. Hmm. Open play. In open play, when mustering for a battle, you can include one monster in your warband. Monsters cost points just like any other fighter, but are ignored for the purposes of the rule that requires all fighters in a warband share the same faction rune mark. Okay, yeah. In a narrative play, a warband will need to win an appropriate challenge battle before they can add a monster to the warband roster. Neat. Matched play. Monsters cannot be included in N in warbands and match play battles. <gasps> Sad. However, if both players agree, players should feel free to use open play rules for monsters in their match play games to allow them to include one monster in their warband. I agree, and I think that we are both going to agree on this, because <laughs> that is awesome. Monster Allegiance. So excited to see what these monsters are going to be about. Well, here's the Chaotic Beasts. The new Chaotic Beasts that we're getting. All manner of slavering pack beasts and mutated horrors can be found across the Bloodwind Spoil. Whether striking from ambush or swarming in vast numbers, they are deadly opponents capable of slaughtering a host of the unwary. So, a Razor Gore. 14425. Movement 8, toughness 4, 25 points for 185. That's nice. Uh, what is his ability there? Uncontrollable Stampede. Until the end of the spider's activation, the next time the spider finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick an enemy fighter within one inch of the spider, allocate a number. Okay, so he's really just, uh, he bull rushes him and stabs him. Cool. Or a boar. That's good. Chaos Spawn, 175 points, 14424, 5430. Tough. And he has Writhing Tentacles. Add the value of this ability to the attack's characteristic of the ne next attack action made by the spider. This activation that has a ranged characteristic of three or less. 
add the value of this ability to the attack's characteristic. Nice. That would be nasty. He already has four attacks, so that could be pretty horrifying. 175 points. Chaos Warhound. Oh, only 70 points. One, three, three, one, three, eight range, and three, ten hit points. I could take multiples of these guys. All right, and they're chaotic beasts now, so uh, if we get these guys, I could just add them for... I mean, why wouldn't you just add a monster um, if you got a twist card? But if you didn't have the monster or didn't fit, you can now add these guys in as your possible chaotic beasts. And what was his ability? Was that one? Where is it? This one. Outrunner of Chaos. Add half of the value of this ability rounding up to the move characteristic of the spider for the next move action they make this activation. So that's cool. Uh, he'd get far. I guess as a thrall he'd be pretty handy. Chaos Garden. Oh, here we are. Okay. First things first. Who has 300 or less points? 305, 330, 355, 295. Uh, well, let's just look at this one first because he could come out potentially um, in a twist. A Cygor. A Cygor's single staring eye. Oh, it's a Cyclops ish. Oh, Cygor. Cyclops Minotaur. Got it. Uh, Cygor's single staring eyes attuned to the flow of magic. They hunger for the bright souls of spellcasters and others steeped in the power of sorcery and with their huge strength can curl, can hurl chunks of masonry with their great accuracy. We saw a picture of him earlier, didn't we? There he is. This guy, the Cygor. Oh, he's got a damage points table. Neat. Oh, it looks like all of them do. Well, that's a neat little feature. Gets you accustomed to damage tables in Warcry. All right, so range two, four, four, and that's dependent on how much damage he's taking. And well, let's see, zero to 10 damage. Which, okay, it's 50 health. Wow, all right, two, four, four, Strength? Uh, toughness is only four. That's a little bit surprising, but I mean, the guys do have to try and take him out somehow. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I suppose he doesn't have any much clothes on, but you know. Uh, and 50 health. Cool. And so zero to ten damage points. His movement is six and he does four, eight. Wow. He's, he's just gonna slay through little guys. <laughs> And then he goes down slowly uh, in the next 10 point bracket he's 5, 4, 6 and then 4, 3, 6 and then 3, 3, 4 and then 2, 2, 4. Even when he's nearly dead, I mean he probably doesn't want to move anywhere and he can still do 2, 4 with 4 attacks damage so he is going to hurt you so badly for a very long time. That's really cool. Shall we look at his Cygor abilities? We could look at his Cygor abilities, but I kind of just want to look at what the other stuff does. And we, you can check out his Cygor, his abilities. All right, so Chaos Gargant. Not a twist, he's over 300 points, unless there's a twist I haven't seen that is more than 300 points. Um, but Chaos Gargant, he is also 50, also toughness 4, 2, 4, 5, so one better in strength, and 6, 4, 8, 5, 4, 3, 3, 3, okay, so it's the same, um, so probably the abilities would really Vicious headbutt. All right, I'm gonna have to read this one. Pick a visible enemy fighter within six, uh, one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each four plus, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. That is so nasty. The a Gorgon. Uh, 50 hit points, four toughness, 
256. Oh, nasty. Also the most expensive thus far. And ooh, 410, 483, 3626. So quite nasty. Same movement, all of them move at six thus far in general. Nasty. Let's look at his plot. Ravenous Blood Greed. This fighter can make a bonus move action a number of eight inches equal to the value of this ability. Then this fighter can make a bonus attack action. Okay, so his quad is just rampage, basically. Um, with some restrictions, actually, but basically rampage. Okay, Skitter Strand Arachnarok. Oh, it's a spider. Goodness. Ah, uh, Skitter Strand Arachnarok. One, six, five. Wow, six attacks, five strength, fifty-five. Oh, he's three hundred and fifty-five. 55 health, still 4 toughness, but he moves on 8. Ooh, he's 5. 5 initial damage, 8, 4, 7, 3, 6, 2, 4, and 1, 2. Oh, well, it's not so bad when he's really, really damaged. Very, very uh, little damage, but his initial damage is pretty. That's 2 smacks, and most standard individuals are dead. If you get a crit, and uh, one of them could kill a, a little guy, and if you get two crits, you could just take out the majority of every guy. <laughs> Other than, I guess the higher higher hitting, the higher HP ones might be okay. But nasty. Ooh, that's what. Let's look at his quad. Pick an enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. Remove that fighter from the battlefield and set them up within one inch of this fighter. Then this fighter makes a bonus attack action. Oh my goodness, dragged victim, I say. That is just a little bit horrifying. Oh, we've got so many new ones. Neat. 345, 345, 350, and 360. So still only the one that can scoot in with the twist. I must check to see if the twists have a higher level ones than 300 points. All right, War Hydra. Uh, who doesn't want to face a Hydra, right? Two, six, five, fifty-four, six, five, ten. So there's looking pretty similar, like two, six, five, four, fifty, uh, 2, 4, 5, 4, 50, 4, 8, 5, 10, nasty, 5, 10, 4, 8, 2, 5, 5, 4, 50. So I imagine the biggest differences between all of them, uh, besides their appearance, is going to be their abilities for sure. Well, let's look at the Hydra's quad. Sever one head, another takes its place. Remove a number of damage points allocated to the spider equal to the double the value of this ability. Wow. Is this going to be really hard to kill? Well, I suppose he doesn't have access to a uh, different healing. Let's just have a look. I just love the Hydra, so let's have a look at his other ones. Quick with the Lash. Add half of the value of this ability rounding up to the move characteristic of the spider for the next move action they make this activation. And his regular move is 6. So that could be pretty uh, nasty. For the next move action, huh? The, it's only they only get to add it to one move per double. Well, I guess uh, per activation. Fiery breath. Woo! Pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter and roll a dice for that fighter and each other fighter within three inches of that fighter. <laughs> okay. On a 3 plus, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. That is so cool. Mm. Alright. Carabdis. Carabdis. Carabdises are primeval horrors prized by Alvin Beast Hunters. When threatened, they are capable of emitting a howl that chills the very soul, rendering their prey easy pickings to be soon devoured. 
This has the same build as the Hydra. You get to add a half the value of this build to the move test trick, and their move characters is also six. Abyssal Howl. Roll a dice for each enemy fighter within a number of inches of this fighter equal to the value of this ability. Uh, three plus until the end of the battle round, the fighter being rolled for cannot make move actions or disengage actions. They're frightened. That could be pretty cool for objective based uh, um, victory conditions. Not being able to move or disengage is pretty nasty. For each enemy fighter within a number of inches of this fighter equal to the value of this ability. Nasty. And then Spiked Tail. Allocate a number of damage points to all visible enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter equal to the value of this ability. So it's one way you could do it is you activate once. Oh right, he has three activations. So you activate, do the howl, and then do the spiked tail, your next activation. And then do the spiked tail again, your next activation. All while hitting six times. Pretty cool. Alright, let's look at the terror geist. The piercing shriek of a terror geist is enough to shatter the mind of any who hear it. Mm -hmm. Two, four, five, four, and fifty points. Uh, Twelve movement. Oh, our fastest mover. Ah, he flies. Yes. Four, eight is the base damage. Three, six, three, six, two, four, and one, two. Swooping dive. That sounds horrifying. Add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the move characteristic of the spider for the next. Okay, so it's actually just the same as quick with the lash, but with a swooping dive. Death scream. Roll one dice for each visible enemy fighter within eight inches of this fighter. On a five, allocate one damage point to the fighter being rolled for. On a six, allocate number of damage points to the... And this is all... and every enemy fighter within eight inches. Ow. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. Cool. Infested with bats. A fighter can only use this ability if 10 or more damage points have been allocated to them. What? They're, they're beaten such that bats just come flying out of him. That is absolutely horrifying. Allocate a number of damage points to all visible enemy fighters within 3 inches of this fighter equal to the value of this ability. Wow. That is cool. And Zombie Dragon. With a dust-dry roar, the zombie dragon descends upon tattered wings. Alright, so, flying, of course, and he has a movement of 12 as well. 4, 8, 3, 6, 3, 6, 2, 4, 1, 2. 2 inch range, 5, 4. So it looks like every one of them has 2 inch range. Most of them have a 5. Oh, that one has a 6. A, the, uh, Gorgon has a 6 strength. Most of them have a 5 strength though. And they have 4 or more attacks. With a base damage of 4 and 8. Or better. Wow. These guys seem like so much fun. Alright. 2, 5, 5, 4, toughness. All of them have only a 4 toughness. I guess you do need to be able to kill them. Right, so he has the swooping dive as well. And he has triple sword like claws at half the value of this ability, rounding up to the attack's characteristic of the next attack action made by the spider. This activation that has a range characteristic of 3 or less. That is super nasty. Pestilent breath. Pick a visible enemy fighter within eight inches of this fighter and roll a dice for that fighter and each oh he pushes his breath upon them like the fiery breath of the war hydra. This guy's got a pestilent breath. On a two to five, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. Wow, okay. On a 6, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to double the value of that ability. That is neat. Cool zombie dragon. Allies. Alright, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. 8 
new monsters to choose from. Oh, right, and um, we've got three. Yeah, so we got three for chaotic beasts. We have the Terrorgeist and the Zombie Dragon for death. And yeah, okay, so the Skitter Strand Arachnorok is for destruction. And the War Hydra and the Carabdis is uh, for order. Okay, allies. This section introduces a new type of fighter referred to as an ally. Allies are fighters with the ally rune mark and can be hired by warbands with shared allegiance, including allies in your warband. Every ally has a faction rune mark. Consult the ally faction rune mark and warband faction table. Uh, to see which factions an ally shares allegiance with. An ally can only be included in a warband whose faction rune mark appears in the same column as its own faction war rune mark. Additionally, the rules for including an ally in your warband vary depending on the style of game you are playing. So, open play and match play are the same. In open play and match play, when mustering for a battle, you can include one ally in your warband. Allies cost points just like any other fighter, but are ignored for the purposes of the rule that requires all fighters in a warband to share the same faction rune mark. In narrative play, allies can be added to your warband while your warband is embarked on a campaign quest. During the add and remove fighter step of the aftermath sequence, you can add one ally to your warband roster for each area of dominated ter territory on your warband roster. If your warband can include thralls when mustering for a campaign battle, any allies you include in your warband do not decrease the number of thralls you can include, and vice versa, in case you were wondering. Ally Faction Rune Marks The faction rune mark on an ally fighter card differ from the faction rune mark on other uh, fighter cards. Each has a halo incorporated into its design, which makes it distinct from the faction rune mark upon which it is based. For example, the Night Hunt Ally Faction Rune Mark is different to the Night Hunt Faction Rune Mark. This means that allies cannot use the abilities listed on the ability card of your Warband and vice versa. Okay. Allies cannot be included in your Warband by any means other than those outlined in this section. This means that if you choose to fight a Fated Quest, you will not be able to choose a Faction Rune Mark on the Fighter card of an ally as the Faction Rune Mark for that campaign quest. So, who do we have? Ooh. So the Slaves of Darkness can go with any of these. Uh, untamed Beasts, uh, Iron Golems, Unmade, Corvus Cabal, uh, Cypher Lords, Splintered Fang, and two that haven't come out yet. Slave of Darkness, Beasts of Chaos, Wait, I've not seen any Beasts of Chaos, so they can't be paired with anyone at the moment, Corn Bloodbound, ah, there's Corn Bloodbound, so Corn Bloodbound can be paired with all of the Warcry factions, Beasts of Chaos can't, Unless I'm just blind and can't see it. Oh. I guess it'll be paired with the beast men when they come out. Hmm. Interesting. We've got the Dark Oath Chieftain, the Dark Oath War Queen, the Chaos Sorcerer Lord, and a Chaos Lord for the Slaves of Darkness. You can have one of these in here. 185, 185 points, 195 points, 165 points, 190 points. Numbers are slaves, uh, and then we've got the slaves to darkness abilities. Okay, so Dark Wolf Teachin, 1 range, 5 attacks, 5 uh, strength, 2, 5, and 4 movement, 4 toughness, 25 points. So he's good. His ability is this one, Death Blow, and the value 
uh, of this ability to the damage points allocated to enemy fighters by each hit or critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter. This activation, that is a ranged characteristic of Thrillus. That is really nasty. That's, that's, that's super nasty. That could go from a really heavy hit to, I guess, a death blow, right? Cool. That's, and he has five attacks, so he's going to be hitting and critically hitting, possibly. Nice. And it is only a double. All right. Dark Oath Warcreen. One, four, five, two, five, four, five. Okay, so it's basically, yeah. Then, oh, no, she has a different ability. Um, but five, ten points more. But her toughness is five instead of four. She has a Daemon Blade. Uh, add the value of this ability to the strength characteristic of the next attack action made by this fighter. This activation has a range characteristic of three or less. So, okay, but her strength is already five. Pretty nice against monsters though, I guess. No, there's toughness is four. Huh. Uh, what is it? Then a lot of the Night Hunt have a toughness 5, so it would be nice to get in there a little bit more if you happen to have a double you'd like to use, so neat. Uh, Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Ooh, magic. Uh, he is 25 health, toughness 4, movement 4. Uh, he has a 3 to 7 range on its magic, 2 attacks, 3 strength, 3 to 6. He could use that Daemon Blade. Uh, he only has three strengths. Three, six, though. That's nice. And he has a club as well. Two range, three attacks, four strength, and one four damage. Uh, he's nice. Let's see. Demonic power. Pick a visible enemy fighter, a visible friendly fighter within eight, inch of, eight inches of this fighter. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the strength and attacks characteristics of the next attack action made by that fighter that has a ranged characteristic of three or less. That's nice. It was only on a double. Eight inches. Lots of flexibility. Well, I suppose not amazing flexibility, but pretty nice flexibility on who you're going to give it to. I like that. And he's got range himself so he can stay out and he really should. He's definitely better um, at a distance though. Um, well he could use it on himself. So that makes him even better for sure. Three attacks and uh, four toughness is all right particularly with three and a six damage. Mm. Oh wait, that fighter has a range characteristic of three or less. Okay, so he can use it on himself, but he can't use it for that ability. Never mind. Uh, da -da -da. Chaos Lord, two inches range, three attacks, four, five toughness, three, six damage. Nice damage. And four uh, movement, four toughness, and 25 health. And what is this ability? Oh, it's the Daemon Blade. Yeah, okay, so he has the Daemon Blade um, and the Will of the Gods. Until the end of the battle round, add... Until the end of the battle round, add one to the move characteristic of friendly fighters that are within six inches of this fighter at the start of their activation. That's neat. Good for taking objectives and running after really fast, important guys. So, Beasts of Chaos, I guess... These will... he can't really be used with anyone yet, um, so I guess he's, he'll be usable for when they come out with a piece of chaos. Um, cards for Warcry, which they haven't yet. Uh, four movement, four toughness, 25 uh, hit points, three to seven, two, three, it's the same as his spell, he does his own spell. Two, three, four, one, four. Actually, he's exactly the same as this guy. Yes, exactly the same, but uh, he's a shaman for the Beast of Chaos versus a Chaos Lord. So cool. Corn Bloodbound. Ooh, Aspiring Deathbringer. Exalted Deathbringer with Impaling Spear. Exalted Deathbringer with Runous Axe. Skull Grinder, Slaughter Priest with Blood 
bath bathed axe and slaughter priest with wraith hammer and hack blade and you can use all of these guys with any of the war bands nice look at their points 200 200 200 190 210 and 205 um reasonable now look, what does it do one as one range five attacks five strength two five four four thirty wow that is nice i'd use them for 200 good thing you can only put bring one of these guys in he would totally try and use more than one all right and his ability is slaughter incarnate until the end of the battle round add half the value of this ability rounding up to the damage points allocated to enemy fighters by each hit or critical hit from attack actions made by friendly fighters that have a ranged characteristic of three or less whilst they're whilst that friendly fighter is within eight inches of that fighter wow cool he gets in a little group with your friends and you slaughter that's cool uh, let's see what else exalted Deathbringer with impaling sphere spear at two range three attacks five three six that's good four movement four and thirty four four thirty four four thirty four four thirty two four four thirty two so pretty similar in that um three six and his ability is skulls for the skull throne a fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation pick a visible friendly fighter within eight inches of this fighter that fighter can make a bonus move action then they can make a bonus attack action okay so it's like a rampage um after someone kills someone Neat. A fighter can use this ability, so after he kills someone, he goes and lets someone else. Mm, or himself. Uh, make a move, um, go on a rampage. Cool. And 200 points. Yep, I'd use him too. Ah, oh, the decision then would be which one do you use? I assume that's going to be a really hard decision. Exalted Deathbringer with Brunus Axe. Uh, okay, so he has the same ability as the other exalted death burner except okay we've got a range of two inches with five strength versus a range of one inch with three strength uh, six strength hmm otherwise the same i don't know who i would use i mean i definitely like the two inch range that's really nice so I guess I would use this one, but the six strength, I mean, if you're facing, uh, if you're regularly facing uh, really tough guys, that six strength will get you a lot more hit, particularly since you only have three dice to, uh, to use. Hmm. Endures. Oh, there's, right, there's a, there's one that they, everyone can use. Yes. Yes, one that uh, blood for the. Of course, they have blood for the blood god. A, a, a fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them. This activation, this fighter makes a bonus move action or a bonus attack action. Nice. Uh, of course, they have blood for the blood god. Corn blood blown without blood for the blood god. What would that be? All right, skull grinder. Uh, so he's 190, 10 points less than the other guys. 4, 4, 30, so same toughness, movement, and hit points. He has a range of 3, which is always nice. Only 2 attacks, but strength 5, and his base damage is 3, 6. Now, what is this ability? Fiery Anvil. Add the value of this ability to the strength characteristic 5 of the next attack action made by this fighter. Is this activation that has a range characteristic of 3 or less? I wish he had more attacks, but he does have a range of three. Huh. Uh, monsters can't use the universal abilities. Did they say what their allies could use their universal abilities? Because that would be nice if he could use Onslaught with that. 
monsters and universal abilities. Monsters cannot use universal abilities. Okay, so it specifically says under this thrills and monsters that monsters can't use universal abilities, but I do not think, yeah, I don't see anything about allies not using universal abilities. So yeah, so he could use own slot yeah, and be even better. What does the slaughter priest do for 210? 4, 4, 32, 1, 3, 6, 3, 6. That's nasty. And slaughter priest, you kill someone of your own guys. Blood boil. Pick a visible enemy fighter within 14 inches of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each 4 plus, allocate D3 points to that fighter. Gosh darn it, you're vicious. Wow. That is horrible. Horrifying! 14 inches! You think you're safe, but he boils your blood. Wow, that is so nasty. One, three, six, three, six. Okay, he's the winner for me. Thus far. I don't know what you guys think, but I've got to try him out. Uh, Slaughter Priest with Wrath, wrath Hammer and Hackblade. Ooh, two different abilities. I like the flexibility. Oh, he's gonna blood boil too! Oh my gosh, slaughter priests are so nasty! 4, 4, 32, 1, 4, 5, 2, 5, versus 3, 2, 4, 1, 3. Hmm. Alright, Disciples of Zinch. The, we've got. A Magister, uh, Zangor Shaman, Orgroid Thaumaturge, Gaunt Summoner on Disc, and Gaunt Summoner. Those are some creepy people. Yes, Zinch. Basically the same. The, so he, the Magister is 3-7 range for his spell. 2-3-3-6. 4-4-25-165. Uh, except for he's using a sword with one inch, three attacks, four, and two, four. Now, the disciples of Zinch can be used by and any of the warbands as well. So, what would you choose? There's so many choices. You've got to try all of them out, I guess, until you figure out ones that you like. And then the flavor. Well, let's see. What did he? Uh, oh, okay. He doesn't have any special ability, but they all have access to Locus of Sorcery. Add half of the value of this ability, rounding up to the strength characteristic of the next attack action made by this spider uh, activation at this uh, that has a range characteristic of three or more. Okay, so that is <laughs> that one is actually pretty useful for this guy because he only only has a three strength or four strength. Yeah, all of them only have three to four strengths depending on uh, which one they use. So that would actually be really handy for these guys. Um, let's, uh, looks like they're pretty... Wow, who are you? Ah, of course you fly. The Zangor Shaman has a movement of 10. Toughness for 25 uh, hit points. And same spell basically the same sort of attack with his bite, except for he has one more attack, uh, but he's 260 versus 165. Flight is really nice though. What is his ability that... Visions of the future for a triple. Pick a friendly fighter that has not activated yet this battle round, and that is within and that is within nine inches of this fighter. You can activate that fighter immediately after the activation of this fighter ends. Pick uh, triple visions of the future. Pick a friendly fighter that has not activated yet to this battle round, and that is within nine inches of this fighter. You can activate that fighter immediately after the activation of this fighter ends. Well, that's nice. That's pretty powerful. And he is the only one here that can have that ability. Maybe that's why he's so much more than this one. Uh, it is pretty powerful. And of course he can fly, and I have determined that flying units and war cry is pretty powerful. Uh, Ogroid Thaumaturge. 4-4-32. Uh, four, four, 
35 hit points instead of 25. Same spell. Uh, very similar. Two range, three attacks, four toughness, two four damage. He has this ability, which is Brutal Rage. A fighter can only use this ability if 15 or more damage points are allocated to them. Add half of the value of this ability, rounding up to the strength characteristic of the next attack action made by this fighter. This activation that has a ranged characteristic of three or less. Gaunt Summoner. Uh, similar, similar, and has Warp Tongue Blade. Oh, he's also a flyer, 10 inches, 430. So similar to this one, also 260 points. Uh, with this ability, which says Warp Tongue Blade, pick a physical enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability on a two to five allocate one damage point to the fighter being rolled for on a six allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability so nice and then gaunt summoner gaunt summoner and disc versus gaunt summoner which is 170 points versus 260 points range of two with three attacks for one on the damage instead of two, so that is a downer. Uh, oh, and he doesn't fly. Four, four, 24, still nice. Uh, let's see, we've got Skaven. I'm, who can Skaven go with? Oh, Skaven can go with any of the war bands, uh, any of the uh, Warcry original war bands. And Maggot Kin of Nurgle also can go with any of the work, right? Lord of Plagues and Lord of Blight. Uh, same sort of thing as what's over here for 125 points. Movement 5 instead of movement 4, which is nice. Consume Warpstone Token. Roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each roll of 1, allocate 1 damage to point to the spider. What? For each roll of one, allocate one damage to this fighter, okay. For each roll of four plus, add one to the damage points allocated to the enemy fighters by each hit or critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter. This activation has a range characteristic of three or more. Well, that's kind of neat. It consumes a warp stone. Cool. Strike and scurry away by the sky, the Claw Lord, 145 only three. Oh yeah, he's only at three toughness too. They're little rats. Uh, 22, 15425. Five. Nice damage and a, a number of attacks though. Strike and scurry away. This fighter makes a bonus attack action, then they can make a bonus disengage action. It is exactly what it says. Cute. Stormcast Eternals Warrior Chamber. Ooh! All right, I'm not going to go through all of their stats, but I will at least read out what um, who you can add, and yeah. So you can add a Lord Celestine for 205 points, a Lord Castellan for 210, Lord Veritan for 190, Knight Quester for 220, Knight Vexiller for 180, or a Knight Heralder for 195. And they have their own various abilities. Uh, we have a Daughters of Cain that you can add, a Hag Queen or a Slaughter Queen for 130 or 150 with a couple of abilities. Uh, Idenith Deepkin. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming that these guys can, you can only add it to. Uh, Stormcast Eternals, you can only add to. Okay, so you can add a ally from Daughters Kane Stormcast or Island of Thiepin to uh, Daughters Kane Island of Thiepin or Stormcast. So that's, that's cool. Um, and they are here. right. So Island of Thiepin, Tidecaster, Soul Render, or Soul Scryer can be added. And now we've got Night Hunt, Legion 7 Dash, and Flesh Eater Quartz, which I assume can be added to, yes, Night Hunt, Legion of Nagash, and Flight Eater Quartz. 
So a Knight of Shrouds, ooh, nice. A Knight of Shrouds, a Karn Wraith, a Lord Executioner, a Spirit Torment, and a Tomb Banshee could all be added to Night Hunt. From Night Hunt, uh, a Lone Necromancer or White King can be added from Legions of Nagash, and an Aberrant Ghoul King can be added from Flesh Eater Court. And then for Iron Jaws, Gloom Spike Gates, and Bone Splitters, you can add a Mega Boss uh, from Iron Jaws, a Mega Boss War Chanter, Weird Knob Shaman, a Savage Big Boss from Bone Splitters, and then Fungoid Cave Shaman, Boggle Eye, Scaremonger, Shroommancer, Bruget, and Spiker, and Loom Boss can come from Gloom Spike Gates. And then there's the new War Cry Warband roster you can use. Well, that was super exciting. I am really excited to get those allies into combat right away. I actually already have some because I was building another Age of Sigmar army and uh, some of them can immediately play, be played in our next War Cry battles. So I'm so excited to try that out. And I'm also really excited to try out some monster battles. Oh, that's going great. And of course the next one, well, I don't know if we have it, but we'll find. Yeah, well, yeah we, don't, we don't have one at the moment, but we'll have to acquire one. Uh, some monsters to fight in uh, some Warcry battles, maybe a challenger uh, battle or something like that. And, mm, and, and it says that in a match play, or perhaps we'll just do an open play variant where you can add models to your warband. Oh, that'd be so much fun. Mm, I just, I, I'm, I like big monsters. <laughs> and I, the, it brings me back to D&D style big fights. So I'm excited to try that out. I just like that they added more variety to Warcry. I mean, Warcry, we have, if you get all of the different warbands, you have a lot of variety already. And then if you play Age of Sigmar and can add your Age of Sigmar ones, you have a lot of variety already. Um, but they added some more variety. I mean, you could do so much with this game. I just love it. If you liked the video, please like, and if you'd like to see more Warcry and Wargaming and Warhammer related material, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so you can see our next video right away. Thanks for watching, have a great one, and enjoy playing with your mercenaries and your monsters. I know we are going to have a great lot of fun. Bye!